boost is the Nasdaq and a winning session for both Bay and Wall Street. Business at 26. The BBS Times, 10 1. Traffic and weather time. Here's Nathan Fernandez. Thank you, Scott. This report is brought to you by Lynx Air. Getting an update from MTO on the construction on the westbound 403. So here now at Winston Churchill, all lanes have been blocked for overnight construction. You are going to be forced stop at Winston Churchill. And the initial lane closures start approaching Mississauga Road. So it is very backed up right now from uh, west of Mavis to approaching Winston Churchill. Keep in mind, the next place you can get on, it looks to be at the Dundas on ramps to the westbound 403. So keep that in mind if you are traveling through that stretch. If you are headed eastbound on the 401, ramp to Leslie, we've still got a right lane blocked with a stalled vehicle. Construction at Stevenson taking out a left lane. Westbound on the 401, Brimley in the collectors, single left lane block. Delays from Brimley to Kennedy in the collectors. Avenue in the express, two left lanes taken out. Avenue in the collectors, single left lane block. Good news though, all the delays from Young to Bathurst seems to have eased up. If you are traveling northbound on the 400, King Road, two right lanes blocked. Northbound DBP 404, Highway 7, two left lane shutdown. Southbound 427 at Langstaff, single right lane blocked. Flying direct to Tampa Bay with Lynx Air from $119. Trade piles of snow for miles of sand with ultra affordable flights at flylinks.com. Your next traffic report is in less than 10 minutes with the forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Natasha Ramzahai. Overnight tonight, we're headed down to a low of zero in the city. Wind chill minus five. Watch for some wet flurries through the traditional snow belt. So let some lake effect flurries coming in off of Georgian Bay. A little breezy Saturday morning. The afternoon, a mix of sun and clouds with a high of six degrees. Tonight, down to zero. Wind chill minus five by morning. Right now in downtown Toronto, six degrees, mainly cloudy skies. City News Time, 10.03. Now, City News in team coverage. The situation for those needing medical attention in Gaza is growing more dire. This comes as Canadians wait patiently to escape the safety. Escape to safety. We'll have more on that in just a moment. As City News 680's Phil Martino tells us, thousands of people are leaving Gaza in search of medical aid. Half of Gaza's hospitals and two-thirds of its primary health care centers are not functioning at all. The director of the World Health Organization says those that are functioning are operating way beyond their capacities. The health system is on its knees. Dr. Tom Protokar with the International Committee of the Red Cross is currently working at a hospital in southern Gaza. He tells ABC his youngest burn patient is four months I've been to Gaza many times in the past. This is far, far worse. It's a completely different stratosphere. Meantime, the official death toll in the October 7th attack in Israel by Hamas has been lowered to 1,200 people. Israel's foreign ministry had previously estimated the figure at 1,400. The U.S. is involved in high-level talks to free the hostages taken by Hamas last month. So Martino City News. Well, it was supposed to be a day where the largest number of Canadians were able to flee the Gaza Strip, but that has been put on hold. City News 680's Parliament Hill reporter Cormac McSweeney has that angle. Once again, the Rafa border crossing had to be closed, and unfortunately, officials tell us no Canadians made it across. 266 of our citizens, permanent residents, and their family members were waiting to finally leave the violence and make their way to safety in Egypt. More than 100 Canadians have already done so, and some are now back on our soil. Here at home, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says he's deeply concerned about the recent acts of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. What we need to do as Canadians is remember who we are as we lean on each other, as we go out and visit our friends in the Jewish community, stand with our friends in the Muslim community. Trudeau also stressed the need for the international community to start the work toward a two-state solution. Cormac makes Sweeney Parliament Hill. The fighting in Gaza has created a rise in hate-related crimes here in Toronto, prompting Olivia Chow's call for a ceasefire. City News 680's Alex Bloomfield is at City Hall and joins us with those details. Mayor Chow is calling for both a ceasefire in Gaza and the unconditional release of all Israeli hostages. However, her motivation for this lengthy statement was not international, but easing tensions here at home. As the mayor, I think it's my responsibility to make sure people in Toronto feel safe and that peace is the solution to get there. She received support from a spokesman for the National Council of Canadian Muslims. This call 
for a ceasefire from Canada's largest city should be a beacon of encouragement to all leaders across Canada and the world. The NCCM also condemned the rise in both anti-Semitic and Islamophobic incidents in the city. One of the latest hate crime investigations, graffiti on the windows of the Bay Bloor Indigo location Friday morning, targeting the company's Jewish CEO. At City Hall, Alex Bloomfield, City News. City News Time 1006. Deliberations continue for the jury in the Peter Nygaard trial, but not before the jury asked the judge that they were deadlocked for some clarity. Our Carmen Dummyhu has an explanation. Members of the jury were reportedly deadlocked on one of Nygaard's six charges, so they went to the judge for clarification on a few things. Their first question was, how do we proceed as there's a firm stance that a unanimous decision will not be met? To that, Justice Robert Gold Goldstein replied that while a unanimous verdict is desirable on all counts, it is not mandatory, but he strongly urged the jury to keep deliberating. Their second question was regarding the forcible confinement charge against Nygaard. Jurors asked for a definition of a significant period of time, to which the judge replied more than momentarily. After receiving those answers, the jury retired for the evening with a promise to return to deliberations Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Nygaard has pleaded not guilty to five counts of sexual assault and one count of forcible confinement in alleged incidents ranging from the 80s to mid-2000s here in Toronto. Carlin Donahue, City News. City News Time 1007. A powerful visual display outside Sunnybrook Veterans Center. City's Audra Brown joins us from the front lawn of the Bayview Building, which is covered with 30,000 Canadian flags. For the veterans, the site is a moving tribute and a welcome reminder that Canadians do remember their sacrifice. I mean, I'm 101 years old now. I, uh, I appreciate it more. It's very important to the veterans. Uh, I think it's great for uh, the civilian population to understand uh, what it means to the veterans that are 